guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about risk adjustment for brand new medical coders. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, now risk adjustment coding. So a lot of people get very excited about risk adjustment coding in the beginning because they say, oh, it is just diagnosis coding. If you are brand new, a brand new medical coder, this is a great place to start because this is getting essentially your feet wet into the industry, uh, but this is not a good place to stay. Now, the reason that I say it's not a good place to stay is because only coding for diagnoses, it will stunt your growth. And for some employers, they do not consider risk adjustment coding as work experience because you are only coding for diagnosis coding. This means that you don't have any experience coding uh, with evaluation and management with um, any kind of modifier usage or any of those procedure codes that can be kind of tricky or anything like that. So you need to have some place where you're starting out, where you're getting a variety of experience uh, coding evaluation and management, coding those minor procedures, coding some major procedures as well. So with risk adjustment, um, the what it is, <laughs> risk adjustment is an actuarial tool to predict healthcare costs. Hierarchical condition category coding, HCC, is a risk adjustment model created by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, to estimate future healthcare costs for patients. So essentially they're just taking these diagnoses that they get in these notes and they're putting it into the system for you know, them to pull their data and things like that. Um, so that's what risk adjustment coders do. So it's really great in the beginning because you think, well, I won't have to worry about you know, evaluation and management coding just yet. And I won't have to worry about like looking at these procedure codes that can be very, or, or these procedure notes that can be very intimidating in the beginning. Uh, but again, you can get bored very quickly. And if you're not continuing to study uh, as you've been out of school and you're in this risk adjustment position, uh, if you're not continuing to study then a whole lot of those things that you learned in school about procedure coding can just kind of fall out of your mind. So that is something that you need to make sure that even if you're in one of these positions right now, a risk adjustment position, that you still continue to work through your workbooks um, that you got in school, or if you don't have them anymore, you can always look at the workbooks that I do have. They're in the description box below. Click on more information and all of those books will pop up and work through those so that way you can maintain your knowledge. You know, risk adjustment requires a lot of pathophysiology. You really have to understand the body process and how it processes disease. So that way, you know, you, you can be really good at it. It still requires that. And for a time, a few years ago, they didn't even want people to be certified to be risk adjustment. Uh, they were just like, you know, if you don't have any uh, certification, that was fine. But that was back then. And now that the risk adjustment certification is very popular with AAPC, now all of a sudden, you know, but they're still asking, majority of the time when you look up those risk adjustment positions, you will still see them ask for the CCS, the CCA, the CCSP, or the CPC. So it's not that, oh, well, I have to get the risk adjustment credential if I want to work risk adjustment. Uh, we're all tested on diagnosis coding <laughs> for those four main medical coding certifications. So it's already covered in the credential that you have. You don't need an additional credential in order to be able to do this. So that's just my advice anyway, guys. I am about keeping you guys, you know, with this neutral voice of, hey, yes, it is your career. It's your life. It's your money. You can do what you want to. And if that's what you want to study because you want to learn more, that's totally fine. Where I have a problem is when people start racking up all these credentials and then they're writing in and saying, Blue, I can't maintain them because I haven't been able to find a job. And I was told if I had all of these credentials that I would be able to get a job faster. That's where I have an issue because it's not about selling a program to promote knowledge. It's about selling a program that's promoting a certification. 
and a certification that, you know, when it comes to how much is this asked for and will this give me more money? No, it won't. So that's something that you really have to consider when you're looking at these kinds of positions like this. But like I said, um, risk adjustment is a great place to start. I'm not going to knock that for brand new medical coders. It is a great place to start, but it is not a good place to stay. I've had people comment in that uh, risk adjustment does get boring because there's really, once you get the hang of it, after a while, there's no challenge there. And when you stop challenging yourself, when you stop challenging yourself, that really does start to stunt your growth as a professional. We have to keep moving the ball forward when it comes to being brand new and learning things because we're still constantly learning things. But if we fall into a trap of not learning anymore, we can get stuck. And there's plenty of people who have years of experience coding only one thing. And guess what happens to those folks? Your, your pool of opportunity gets quite limited because while you have years of experience in, you've only been doing one thing and you never try to learn anything else. So that's one of those things that you really have to kind of like weigh things out. And if you say, well, Blue, I just want to do this because it's a good paying job and that's it. Still, guys, when you're doing this, when you're working in this field, everything that you select is always going to be audited by somebody else. And you're going to have to answer as to why you selected that code or why you selected whatever you selected. And it's going to affect somewhere, somebody somewhere along the way, whether, whether it is in risk adjustment, it's going to skew those, um, those data results. And again, that can be a huge problem. I mean, you see articles about that all the time on LinkedIn. <laughs> so I, like I said, I always wish people would look at these things when they're, when they're trying to get in, when they're trying to do this. I've heard of people, you know, saying that they absolutely only want to work risk adjustment because it is just diagnosis coding and they are totally fine with that. But that also means that you have to be very strong in pathophysiology so that you know that you're selecting codes appropriately and you're not just selecting codes willy nilly. At least that's just my advice anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, start there if you want to. Um, it's, it's just a, a place where you can learn the electronic medical record. All right. So there's another benefit of that. You're learning the electronic medical record. That's another thing that you can add to your resume, which is also good. <laughs> you know, uh, every place is going to have a different EMR. And even if they do have the same, um, different facilities have different packages when it comes to their electronic medical record. So that's one thing that you got to know. It'll be a, a feather in your cap if you do get that, um, electronic medical record knowledge out of that position but again it's not a place to stay it is a place to begin but definitely not a place to stay that's just my advice anyway so uh with that said i'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up thank you guys so much for joining me if this video helped you i hope you will like subscribe and share and i will see y'all next time bye